Number three. On the first of every month, you must travel to the basement, book in hand, and speak aloud the incantation. Okay, why? Number four. Do not venture into the attic. Again? Why? Now I really want to go into the attic. Okay, hello everybody, I am CJU, you're watching CJU Games, and you're watching From the Journal of Randolph Warren Carter, which is an indie game that I recently found on Game Jolt that came out about a month or so ago. It's based on the works of H.P. Lovecraft, and you probably know how much I love that guy. It's uh, a short, story-driven narrative experience, apparently, and um, hopefully this is going to be a really fun game to play. It's actually the first video I'm making in 2016, so hopefully we're starting that off with a bang. I hope you had a great Christmas, holiday period, and a great New Year. Here we go. I swear, everything I'm about to tell you is true, from my own experiences, and from the journal of Randolph Warren Carter. Okay, so adjusting brightness, that seems about right. The portrait, yep, that's about right. That'll do. Three times I knocked and received no answer. I stared deeply at the ancient oaken door that stood before me. Its frame cracked and worn from use and exposure. I waited there, waited for a response that would never come. Eventually, I reached for the handle, and the oddest realization came to my mind. The door had sat upon a decrepit porch, covered in dirt and leaves, yet it lacked a single footprint other than my own. Thus it appeared that no man had entered or left that house in some amount of weeks, perhaps even months. Then and there, I thought to leave at once. What did I owe to my elderly great-uncle? To this man who I had never met? I wish I had left. Oh, what a glorious thing it would have been to simply drive off and remain ignorant to the ongoings of that accursed abode! Yet... Yet my uncle's letter remained fresh in my mind. And this would be your uncle's letter. I could barely make out some of that, I've got to be honest. My volume's on absolute max, I believe, but this the, I, the volume of the game must be so low for some reason. Anyway, the letter. To my dear grand-nephew George, I realise we have never met, and that I have never truly been a part of your family. These monthly letters may be a nuisance, yet I hope you aren't ignoring my simple plea. I do not have much time left in this world and I am in dire need of executor to take care of the many things which I will leave behind. Please travel to my home, so that we may speak in person. I fear the most dire of consequences if our meeting does not happen soon. So please, I beg of you, send some response to relieve this lonely old man of his despair. With love... Well, Randolph, I assume. That letter was over a month old. Ah. I grasped the handle. I held my breath. I pulled the door open wide and surrounded myself in the darkness. Alright. Okay, so we're going in. So it took him a month to get there? Or maybe he just didn't read the letter. I don't know. Uh, so, arrow key, space, F, up and down for flashlight angle. Simple enough. Okay. Escape to restart this game. I really hate games that do that. I. I it's just... It's my go-to key for pausing. I'm glad it told me about it, though, because honestly, I, I might have just pressed that accidentally. Damn, it's dark in here. Good thing I brought my flashlight. So it is. Okay, so I, I, the, the style of the game kind of reminds me of The Last Door, which is a game you may have played or you may have seen me play on my channel before. Um, the Res Horror Experience. What ominous looking oh, I see we can... in an otherwise lovely painting. We can examine the paintings, right. They're temples, are they? Okay. I guess they kind of look like three blue pyramids under the night sky. I don't know, a little bit of guesswork there, but that's about right, I suppose. Ah, w ah. What? Oh, the, the batteries ran out. Shit. Uh, Already? Have to find more. We have to find more. Okay. Uh, I don't remember seeing any batteries this way. Can we just keep going on in the darkness? I guess so. Oh, what's this? Batteries? Looks like a note. No. I can't read it without my flashlight working. Of course you can't. Of course you can't. Wait, it looks like a note or feels like a note? What's... Oh. <laughs> I somehow doubt this is going to be a battery. A stairway. 
Ah. But I shouldn't go up there yet. Okay, I thought it might Not be until like I fix my flashlight. a door or a bookcase. I guess the batteries are this way somewhere. Oh. Okay, that's a door. So, okay, we can explore this place in the dark then, it seems. The batteries must be this way. Uh, is that a note again? It looks like a note. It is. But I can't read it without my flashlight working. Alright. Another door. Yeah, I can see the, the handle this time. This door is locked. Fair enough. Locked this time. Yet another door. The batteries must be around here somewhere. Look, batteries. Ah, really? Or is that... Looks like a note. No, that's a note. But I can't read it without my... Okay, the batteries must be in this room, though. I guess he saw... He, yeah, he saw them across the room. Is this it? Right, here we go. Oh, blimey. Oh. Hello, uncle. Right, well, I've sorted the flashlight problem out, so I suppose that means I can have a look at the notes that I seem to be finding all over the place. Is that another one down here? I think so, yeah. Bloody hell. Dear God. So this is what has become of my uncle. Yeah. Oh, the smell. He's been dead for weeks. I can imagine. Right, so let, let's start off by reading these notes that are littered around the place. Let's start with this one. Wow, okay. To my nephew, George, should you ever read it. It has become too much, the screaming in my head. The abhorrent monstrosities which I picture in the darkness, following me every day, only to escape from view the instant I turn my head. This insanity, which I have been struck with, is not to do with mental illness or dysfunction of the brain. No, I tell you, and pray that you believe me, that this madness which enveloped my psyche is one cast down from an ancient cosmic force. It is from some god with an unspeakable name and a visage which, which evokes unfathomable terror. That said, I must give the following instructions before I am betrayed yet again by my mind. Alright, so number one, you must go upstairs to my study and find a peculiar book. The Necronomicon, okay. Number two, the page of the proper incantation is marked, yet never speak it aloud, not unless the time is right. Number three, on the first of every month, you must travel to the basement, book in hand, and speak aloud the incantation. Okay, why? Number four, do not venture into the attic. Again? Why? Now I really want to go into the attic. Anyway, please, I beg of you to do these things. And perhaps your fate will not be the same as mine. For all this, I'm sorry. So that seems like his, his last note before he killed himself. Something drove him to suicide. Something in the attic? Or something in the basement, perhaps? I'm intrigued. I'll, I've got to be honest. This is good. Okay, I think I saw another note right by the door, so... Yep. Oh, not so much a note, but a diary page this time. Right, I'm not exactly sure when this game is set, but it's got to be some time after this, because we've got, like, flashlights and batteries. Maybe, a, you know, a few decades down the line. Mid-century, maybe. Today I leave for one of the most groundbreaking archaeological expeditions in history. My journey will take me to the lush jungles of the Amazon rainforest. There, a deal has finally been brokered with the local inhabitants. Though certainly it is our excavation team that will come ahead on this exchange. For we will be given the right to research, explore, and in a manner of speaking, plunder one of their ancient temples. Never before has a historian, archaeologist, or other man of science been allowed access to these temples. However, there is a hint of sadness within me, for I must leave my, uh, I must leave my be beloved Lillian at home. This year-long campaign will surely be lonely without her embrace, though perhaps as a token of my love and thoughts for her, and if it is not too much of a bother, I can send back some minor knick-knack or rather curiosity that I find unattended within the temple force. Okay. My sadness regarding Lillian aside, I do however feel positively giddy, simply thinking of the archaic wonders which we might find in this mysterious monolith. Ooh. <laughs> I've got to wonder though, this knick-knack that you maybe sent back to Lillian, is it the Necronomicon? One hell of a find, I've got to be honest. Right, okay, so this way. <laughs> okay, I guess space uses everything, so I did both at once then. Fine. Uh, so this door is locked, right? This door is locked. It is. Okay, so we're looking for a key as well. Um, another note? A painting of a lighthouse. And a painting of a How lighthouse. ironic is that? Ironically, apparently. Okay, anyway, January the 18th this time. After two months of digging, the fruits of our labour have finally surfaced. Aside from some strange hieroglyphs that our resident linguist was enamoured with, the temple itself was rather void of interest to the academics on our team. However, after some minor excavation around the outside and a few sticks of dynamite to remove an antiquated stone wall, we opened a doorway into an underground crypt. Gathered around the open portal, we stared deeply into the black void before us. 
I found myself shaking, fearing the seemingly never-ending darkness that laid before me, and yet thoughts of the knowledge we might gain amongst the many other treasures had entered my mind and calmed my spirits. With newly found resolve and torch in hand, I led the party inside the dungeon, illuminating the cracked stone walls which had been untouched by light for some hundreds of years. This is actually really good. A painting um, of a lighthouse. How ironic is that? Is it a painting of a lighthouse? So it is. Okay. Yeah, this isn't so much of a let's play, more of a uh, more of a story, more of a reading by CJU here. But I uh, hope you're enjoying it. So let's go back here. Um, that's the stairway, right? Okay, and the study's upstairs, so we're going that way. But I don't believe I had a look at this note yet, so let's have a look. Yep, another diary page or a journal page. January the 20, uh, 22nd this time. That cavernous crypt was much larger than any of us would have expected. The various hallways and corridors seemed to stretch endlessly through the darkness, leaving us with countless rooms to explore. It was quickly discovered that we would need to leave markers as we delved into the tomb, lest we find ourselves lost in the maze-like architecture. For three days we examined room after room, hallway after hallway, discovering nothing but mummified remains, primal forms of pottery, miscellaneous jewellery made from beads and bone, and more mundane hieroglyphs. Such findings as these were not uh, of much interest to me, yet today I made a magnificent discovery. I decided to wander an unexplored portion of the crypt, alone. A large risk, but one I was eager to take. As I itched to discover some great treasure hidden inside these stone walls, one particular corridor, enveloped in shadow, called out to me. I quietly crept away from the party, and rarely marked my path. After what felt like hours, I chanced upon a chamber, its entrance hidden behind the door of a lonely sarcophagus. The room was filled with marvellous treasures, golden trinkets, shelves of ancient scrolls, and in the centre, on a pedestal, was a statue unlike anything I had ever seen. Ah, let me guess, that is going to be the knick-knack. Then again, if that's the knick-knack, then where the hell did the Necronomicon come from? Okay, is that the final, is that the final note? I think I'm just approaching the place I started from. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's obviously a portrait, isn't it? This is it? a nicely painted portrait. Yeah. It's probably of my uncle. Well, yeah, probably. I suppose he does look a little bit different with a noose around his neck. Uh, can we go outside? I guess not. No, fair enough. So, let's go up the stairwell. Um, that's going to lead to the study, I assume. And that's where the Necronomicon is, and that's what I want. I like this so far, actually. It's giving my voice a real test, though. Here we go, then. <laughs> no rest for the wicked, is there? Another note! Let's take a look at that first. These plants have been dead for weeks. I suppose that makes sense, though, huh? I gotta be honest, I didn't notice the plants. Uh, January the 22nd again. I cradled the statue in my arms, sliding my hands across its figure. The aberrant image of it still lingers in my mind. It seemed to be a sort of monster, or symbol representing a monster, of a form which only a diseased fancy could conceive. If I say that my somewhat extravagant imagination yielded simultaneous pictures of an octopus, a dragon, and a human caricature, I shall not be unfaithful to the spirit of the thing. A pulpy, tentacled head surmounted a grotesque and scaly body, with rudimentary wings. No doubt this statue was simply a representation of one of the culture's deities. A monstrous manifestation of a god is not unheard of. Yet, the most peculiar thing to me was that as I felt along its base, the geometry of the statue seemed to contrast with the appearance, sharp corners poking my hand from what appeared to be a circular base. At first I, it felt triangular, and then hexagonal, and then all sorts of polygonal shapes. The poking corners were indeed painful, but did not draw blood. Nonetheless, I was enamoured with this strange object, despite its horrid appearance. I moved to place it in my bag and hide it from the rest of the expedition, but unbeknownst to me, a shadowy figure had formed behind me. Oh! Suddenly, a cold hand was placed on my shoulder, and with a surprised shriek, I swung about to identify my molester. Right. I want to know more. I, w I definitely want to know more. These plants have been dead for weeks. I suppose that makes sense. <gasps> oh, I not. see! These are the plants, are they? All oh, right. okay, yeah, they look like really low hat stands or something like that. Uh, oh god, there's another one over here. Okay, here we go. Finally, a happy little painting. And a happy little painting. But starting off, that bastard Winston Dudley Sanderson, proprietor of the Miskatonic Historical Museum, of course, of course, had stealthily crept behind me as I traversed the crypt's dark corridors. As I was about to whisk away my prize from its pedestal, he grabbed me from behind. 
I shouted in terror, yet the snob simply congratulated me on the excellent find. All the treasures in that room were quickly excavated by the remaining members of the party, and collected together in a tent at the centre of camp. Winston himself always seems to keep guard. That is, until his recent bedridden state, for a bout of sickness, has suddenly caught him. And I have no doubt that's something to do with the statue. Alright. Finally, a happy little painting. That's a happy little painting, is it? Oh, I, I, I guess so. A, a forest in wintertime. Maybe in autumn. I don't know. Another portrait. A ladder. And this must go to the attic. Right, it is a ladder. And that goes to the attic. So I'm going to keep well away from that one. Okay, we've got a door. We've got two doors, actually. Uh, that one I can use. This one... He certainly liked portraits of himself. Yes, he did. Uh, yeah, I can't use this door for some reason, but I can use this one. Okay. Is this the study? Is this where I find the Necronomicon? Doesn't look like it. No, this is... I think that's a bed. It, this is a bedroom, and that is probably another down, uh, journal page, right? That bed looks comfy. I wish I had time to sleep. I bet you do. But no, there is more reading to be done, for here we have February the 6th, 1905. Oh, what horrors have happened. Old Winston seems to have contracted some sort... some sickness of the brain. A maddening disease causing terrifying fits of violence. Late last night, he caused quite the commotion. Whilst in a state of madness, he began wandering the camp, muttering incoherencies about his dreams of a Catholan, Cthulhu, uh, just mindless drivel. We paid little heed to him at first, thinking he had simply gone loony from his fever, and thus posed no threat. Oh, but this poor young graduate student in his mid-twenties, who came all the way here to simply learn more about the architecture of ancient temples, attempted to calm Winston during his ranting. The boy only put his hand on Winston's shoulder, yet with a scream of, I'll never let you take me to them! Winston clamped his teeth on the boy's neck. The locals called this event a curse of the gods. Yet any man, as educated as I, would guess that Winston, in his frail old body, was far too easily susceptible to the, to the diseases of the surrounding jungle. Though in the panic he caused, I was able to swiftly sneak into the tent of treasures and snatch away my beloved statue, soon to be packaged and sent home to my lovely Lillian. Shame about Winston and the boy. They couldn't stop the bleeding. Rough. But here's the thing we're going to take away from this. He, I think he managed to send the statue back here. So I'm thinking either the statue's in the attic, or it's maybe something to do with the basement. That bed looks comfy. I wish I had time to sleep. Okay, so uh, we've still yet to find the study. I guess it's going to be to the right somewhere. This is good. I'm actually liking this. There's not too much of a game here, though. A ladder. This must go to the attic. But still, I'm enjoying it. Who's this meant to be, then? Is that Lillian, I suppose? No comments? No? Not this time for some reason? Okay, fine. Here we are. Well, it's a library or something. We have a, a note, maybe? Or is this the Necronomicon? No, it's a journal page again. I finally get back home. After a month and a year, I finally get back home. What do I find? My beloved Lillian. Pregnant. Disgusting, I tell you. Disgusting. She's already in her ninth month. The harlot couldn't remain faithful for four months, let alone a measly year. The worst part is her delusory excuses. She refuses to tell me who she laid with. Oh, Randy, I swear to you, she says. I've always been faithful to you, and only you. <laughs> Such blasphemy. So what am I supposed to believe? That she was chosen by God? That her child is the second coming of Christ? Well then, all hail the new messiah. What a load of horseshit. Now this is getting interesting. Uh, I'm I'm believing her <laughs> at this point. I've got to be honest. Right, more. I need more. This oh. must be the book mentioned in my uncle's note. That's the Necronomicon. Look at that. That's the low res Necronomicon. I like that actually. I really like that. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, we need to go to the basement, but I I still haven't found a key. And there's well, there's nowhere to walk. <laughs> there's nowhere to walk up here. There's no nothing more to find. I don't think. Um... Ooh. Ooh, I like that sound effect. Great. Um... Did that come from the basement or the attic? I'm thinking it's one of the two. Oh, hang on. Uh... Is this the stairway to go down? It looks like I'm going up. I... I wanna... I wanna go down. I wanna stay away from the attic. I'm gonna... I'm gonna heed the warning. Oh shit. Should I be worried? Probably should be. 
Let's check the basement door. I've got to imagine that through here is meant to be the basement door, right? This is actually really eerie. Oh. <laughs> yeah, again, it looks like I'm going up, which I'm sure isn't right, but... That's, uh... That used to be locked. Here we go. If this is in the basement, what the fuck is in the attic? Should I, should I just leave? Maybe you got it wrong. Maybe I'm meant to go in the attic, not the basement. I don't know. Oh, shit, there's a note there, though. Uh, another door. Okay, let's let's read the note. Uh, Boxing Day 1906. It was on Christmas Day that she first felt her contractions. Of course, the day was just a coincidence. I called for a doctor, and swiftly he came. Such great pain she was in, my Lillian. The doctor and his nurses, they did the best that they could, but it wasn't enough. My poor Lillian, she did not survive. They couldn't stop the hemorrhaging. She bled and she bled, and her screams still echo in my mind. There was something wrong with the baby. Abnormal presentation or an umbilical cord issue perhaps? I do not know, but they had major difficulties in expelling the child. By the time they removed the body, it was far too late for Lillian. Even after all she suffered, she was never even able to see the child. Yet it wouldn't have mattered. The baby was stillborn. It arrived strangely mutated. They could hardly tell the difference between the fetus and the afterbirth. Extra eyes, the arms and legs elongated, and the skin. It was scaled like a lizard almost. Whatever heinous disease had done this, I do not know. But despite Lillian's betrayal, I never wished for an outcome such as this. And the child. What did it do to deserve such a fate? It would have been a boy. That's probably for the best, though, considering I think she was going to give birth to a deep one or something. <laughs> That's really worrying. Uh, do I continue on? I suppose I do. I've got to investigate the growling. Here we go. Nothing. Oh. There was nothing there. Before me stood a massive hole where a wall had once been. It spanned nearly 12 feet high and 8 feet across. The walls were littered with the marks of some beast, gashes and scrapes left behind from sharp, angry claws. A foul-smelling ooze covered the floor throughout the room, the secretory remnants of the vile fiend. Carcasses of various animals laid about. They were not but blood and bone. They were difficult to verify. A couple were perhaps from cows. There were smaller ones that were likely dogs. Yet mostly there were heaps of fleshless bone, rendered unrecognizable by devouring jaws. However, at least three were unmistakably human. It was now clear that this basement had become the lair of some monstrous terror that before had been kept at bay by my uncle's spells. This is what he wanted me for. The incantations in the book I found. They were necessary to prevent this horror from being released. I was too late in my response. A month had passed since the incantation was last right, month, yeah. and my uncle had hung himself in madness. And so I flipped through the pages of that eldritch manual, memorizing every word, and frightfully I waited in the darkness for the creature's return. Is that wise? I don't think that's wise. You should get the fuck out of there. <laughs> oh, that's the end? Oh, the creature doesn't doesn't come back to devour him or anything like that? Or maybe he becomes the creature or something bizarre like that? Oh, uh, you know what I'm going to do? This isn't the end. It says the end, it's not the end. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back, I'm going to try and go in the attic. I want to see what's going to happen to me. Here we go. Okay, so here we are again, but this time, rather than going down to the basement, I'm going to go up into the attic. Here we go. Oh, it actually works. Okay, oh, what the hell is that? That must be the statue, right? Let's have a look. What the hell was that? Flashlight. It. Oh fuck! Where's it go? Where'd it go? Hang on. Is that another note? Uh, it might just be a pedestal or something. I'm not sure. No, it's another. It's another journal piece. Okay. It was the statue. It was that damned statue. I know it. It has to be. I know it. The visions, the dreams, the shadows sneaking around every vile corner. That bastard Winston. He was right. His dreams, my dreams, our dreams, about that scaly monstrosity. Cthulhu, 
His name is Cthulhu. I don't dare speak it aloud, for even as I write it on this page, it feels as though my mind is sinking deeper into never-ending void. And Lillian, my beloved Lillian, why did I disregard her, please? She did not lie to me. All along she was faithful. What am I left with now that Lillian is gone from this world? That child. That bastard child. That's what I'm left with. Someone must take care of him. It must be done. Though the statue... Yes, that accursed statue. It, however, has been taken care of. With my hammer, heavy in my hand, I smashed that monstrous thing to bits. Whatever pieces remained, I threw straight into the fire. But why? Why does my brain still ache? Well, hang on, hang on. You just... You just said you broke it up with a hammer? Then what the hell did we just see? Am I imagining things now? Oh dear. <laughs> I, I think I'm affected right now. I'm going to be having these dreams. I'm going to be having these dreams very, very soon. Right. So, let's go back down now. Oh, my goodness. What the That's fuck? Voice. Wow, I am so glad I came back just to have a look at this. This is mental. I'm wondering if this has changed at all. Uh, no, that's the same, that's the same. Okay, so, uh, are we going right here? What the fuck? Hang on. We're just... I thought we were just, we were just walking infinitely then, that was really weird. Okay, let's go in here. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough, this is, uh, you know, up the right way. Interesting. Let's go back. I'm gonna see if I can navigate my way to the basement. Oh, I'm not bloody what surprised. I'll tell you what, actually, before I go down there, I just want to check out every room. I want to see what happened to the bedroom, if anything. Probably nothing. No, I don't think anything has. Everything's okay? I'm going to check the note again, though. That bed looks comfy. Yep. I that bed looks comfy. Okay. I wish I had time to sleep. I'm wondering if this creature is now going to be in the basement, because I think, well, oh, there's nowhere else for it to hide. What is that noise? Time to find out what's downstairs. Alright. Well, gravity's working again. There's the frickin' statue! It's actually there. And what's with this note? Is it changed? Uh, no, it hasn't. Okay. But it is there. Anything else? <laughs> I'm just gonna try once again. To see if I can leave. Dear God. Oh, oh, oh shit. Going on here? What the fuck? This game is really good, but you kind of need to play it through twice. And there's that statue again. Right, did I actually go through that door? I did. Wait, I'm confused. I'm so confused. Where am I? So hang on. Dear God. Okay. What the hell's going on here? So we can't go back into the kitchen area, it seems. What the fuck is going on? No, there's the kitchen. Is the, is the body still there? No, the body's not there anymore. It's just an empty noose. This is crazy. Let's just check the notes again. Uh, yep, yeah, that's the same. And this one here, I assume, is going to be the same, but I just want to check. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're going to go back down to the basement then. Here we go. Is it going to be upside down? Turn 90 degrees? Ooh. Okay, uh, that sounds more ferocious than last time. I'm pretty sure that wasn't there beforehand. What about this note? Uh, yeah, okay. That's, uh, that's the same, that's the same. In we go again. Nothing. There was nothing there. Before me stood a massive hole where a wall had once been. It spanned nearly 12 feet high and 8 feet across. The walls were littered with the marks of some beast. Gashes I think we're just seeing the same cutscene that we saw a moment ago, so I think I might end the video here. Yeah, it's the same. I don't think anything's changed. So thank you very much for watching this playthrough, this let's play, this, this reading, whatever you want to call it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave me a like, leave me a comment, maybe share this video with your friends and family or whoever you can find to bring exposure to the channel. See you next time. Right, so, let's go back down, now... What the what fuck?! Wow, I am so glad I came back just to have a look at this. This is mental!